Only a few years have passed, and it seems as though the pharmaceutical industry and regulators are moving on to another form of mRNA technology. It doesn't seem that you are allowed to ask any questions about this because if you challenge the status quo, it's considered to be misinformation. A bit of a challenge for me, and um, I, I'll show you exactly what that policy says. And it says here, which for prevention of misinformation, they do not allow content that promotes information that contradicts health authority guidance on the prevention or transmission of specific health conditions or on the safety, efficacy, or ingredients of currently approved and administered vaccines. So in effect, I'm not really allowed to ask any questions on this. I just need to go along. My responsibility from a clinical point of view is not so much my patients as much as it is protecting the, industry, the interests of industry and regulators, it seems. So that's a problem. So part of what I've been trying to do is therefore I want to make sure that what I'll mention today with it will be very superficial, but I want you to make sure that you come and join me on The Ugly Truth. This is, the link is in the description. I can be far more candid when I'm speaking to you to explain what I'm thinking about. And please join me if you are interested in understanding a bit more of the details with regards to what my concerns are. And so effectively, I'm not saying that necessarily there is an issue, but I'll be highlighting where I think questions haven't been thoroughly answered. And uh, in talking about this today, because a lot of people may never have heard of self-replicating mRNA, just the name runs chills down my spine because I'm thinking, goodness gracious, do they even understand what happened with mRNA versus to do no self-replicating mRNA? So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking a quick look at this paper here. This is from Cell the rise of the RNA machines, self-amplification in mRNA vaccine design. This was done in November 2023, and this was done in Cell, Trends in, in Biotechnology, and they're talking about the fact that the industry has already started to move on. This is like a runaway, runaway train. You, you would think to yourself, hold on, hold on, do you even understand what happened with regards to the use of mRNA before you move on to even more complex technology? But many people would argue that this has been in the background for a long time. And what has happened is that the breakthrough with mRNA in terms of COVID vaccines has therefore opened the pathway where this kind of technology now can leapfrog ahead and get into our arms. Well, my reality is that I still have questions. And uh, as you can see, I'm not allowed to question the efficacy. It doesn't matter that people are up to 10 or 11 boosters. That is perfectly normal. It doesn't matter that long-term immune cells don't seem to be in the bone marrow. That doesn't matter either. All that matters is that we are told that there are no concerns. And if we are told that, we have no right to raise any further questions. Don't talk about the fact that there are issues with cardiovascular. It cannot be connected. Don't talk about the fact that there are cancer cases rising. It cannot be connected. And anybody who does any kind of thought about that is definitely misinformation. This is where we are today, and it, it is a difficult situation because I don't know how we're going to be able to get around this kind of factor. But anybody who knows what I've been talking about for a while, I keep on talking about this elephant sitting in the room. There's so many strange things going on. We don't have good explanations for it. Everybody is baffled, but nobody noticed this elephant is getting so bad these days that the elephant needs counseling. He doesn't know why nobody is noticing him. It's like he doesn't exist. Anyway, jokes aside, let's get back to the science. 
And as I said, this paper here that was in Cell about the rise of the mRNA machines, self amplification in mRNA vaccine design. So um, the first thing that you have to ask yourself is why are they talking about it now? Because uh, why, why didn't they do that right at the beginning? So here is the problem, and they've highlighted it here. <clears throat> they mentioned the fact that the rapid development of cell-free manufacturing, that's the huge advantage, high clinical efficacy, and you're not allowed to question that, mRNA vaccines outcompeted conventional, live, attenuated, inactivated, and protein-based subunit vaccines. So they are saying that the mRNA vaccines crashed the party for everything else. This is the best thing since sliced bread. However, as it says here, the massive rollout of mRNA vaccines also revealed challenges in balancing the high administration dose with adverse effects, the requirement of prime boost vaccinations, and the necessity of cold chain storage. So this new technology is supposed to try and get around that issue. Now, what they're doing there technically is they are acknowledging one of the questions that people have been saying is that there is a risk of toxicity from lipid nanoparticles. And there is no other reason why you'd want to reduce the amount of it if there wasn't. And what they're saying is that there are concerns about adverse effects related not necessarily to the mRNA, but to the packaging that it is in. And so here is the image from the, um, the paper that kind of describes it. In this case here, this is what we normally have. This is Pfizer and Moderna. The lipid nanoparticle has this mRNA in it. It goes inside the cell. It releases the mRNA, and this mRNA then goes and it makes multiple spike proteins. And it's the spike proteins that trigger the immune response. Now, in the context of the self-amplification, they have a longer string of RNA, but this one doesn't all just contain this string of RNA. It also contains uh, the replication for an enzyme. And this replicon enzymes, when it goes in, what it does now is that it takes the RNA and it amplifies it and multiplies all of them. And then suddenly all of these mRNAs will then produce loads and loads of spike protein. So instead of the same amount being delivered, will produce loads more of the spike protein. You know, from every single angle I think about this, that makes me worried. Because as I said from the beginning, the spike protein is treated in a very unusual fashion by the immune system. It's the driver of the cytokine storm. Why in the world would you want to overproduce so much of that spike protein? I remind people of something that very few people think about. When you have natural immunity, that means you've got an infection, nothing else involved. The immune system doesn't really target the spike protein. It does, but its primary focus is on some other proteins called ORF proteins that are produced and used within the cell to make other pieces of the puzzle. And so the fact that the immune system naturally stays away from the spike protein should be actually very important. However, this is where fundamentally beliefs come in. If you believe that science is more sophisticated than the natural capabilities of the human body, you are likely to think that you can design something that is even better than what you have. I disagree. I think that the human body and the human physiology is exceptionally complex, multiple layers of protection. It's not easy to break. And why would you try and outperform how it works? I tell you, I was trying to come up with an analogy to try and see if I could get this concept in my head. Tell me if this works. You have got, a, let's say, an attack dog. 
and you want this dog to attack foxes in your big um, palatial farm or um, castle. So what you do normally is that you'd get fox meat, you feed it to the dog so that the dog loves fox meat and whenever it sees a fox it will chase after it and target it. That to me would be kind of like what you would do with the normal immune system. If you had a virus, you do some adjustments to it so that it's not so easily infective. You translow it down so that when you put it in front of the immune system, like an attack dog, it just goes after it. But what we seem to be doing here is feels more like you're thinking to yourself, I don't like the idea of taking fox meat. So guess what? I am going to grow fox meat in a lab and I'm going to feed it to the dog so that the dog will then still target the live foxes. Something just feels as though it won't work right here. That's how I look at it. I was trying to find a good analogy, but it, it, it just feels as though fundamentally where we are at the moment with science is that the scientific community believes that they can design stuff better than the human body. I don't have that belief. I have looked at physiology for a long period of time and I marvel each time I look at just how complicated and how intertwined every single aspect of the immune system is. One of the interesting things that it doesn't seem that people took into consideration is whether or not everybody produces the same epitopes to an infection. Meaning that if you had an infection, a viral infection, or let's just say SARS-CoV-2 infection, does your body produce the same epitopes as everyone else? Now, I think that this is so important that I'm going to show you a little bit about what I mean so that you can understand this question. Uh, let me just get this here on screen. So this is the virus here and with the spike protein on top in blue, <clears throat> the red dots are the membrane proteins and the orange are the envelope proteins. Inside you have the RNA and this is the nucleocapsid protein. And then additionally, this mRNA for the virus will then make normal proteins to replicate the virus. Some of these proteins like the ORF um, 1, 2, 3, will then be targeted by the immune system. So here's an interesting question. If you took everybody's immune system and you studied it to see which epitopes does everybody produce, what you're likely to find is that across the immune system, depending on the characteristics of a person, some people may produce more nucleocapsid, some people may produce more membrane protein, some people may not produce some envelope protein and maybe drift towards more the spike. But you are going to have a broad range of immune responses that are relevant to that immune system. I don't think that can be replicated. That's just my opinion. I just think that the immune system is just so complicated and so sophisticated that to imagine that you can feed it a vegetarian burger and it will then know to eat, eat a fox doesn't work. It, it, it is very complicated, very intertwined, and it's something that we don't even fully understand. So I think that this is just highlighting some of the questions that I am going to have when it comes to this point about the ugly truth. I am looking at it, so join me on this webinar. This is where we'll be taking on this question and I'll be sharing with you my concerns. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily good concerns. These are just my questions, my concerns about where we are with the technology, what it is we're trying to do, and critically, what are the risks? Did anyone ever predict that there would be a problem with the immune system making long-term immune cells for the spike protein? Nobody thought of that. It was an unknown, unknown. 
And even now, when we think about it, we don't fully understand the mechanisms. That's something that I mentioned previously, which I'll go through as well in more detail in that presentation. But we are in challenging times, and it's difficult when you have a questioning mind that's trying to find answers, and you're told that you can't ask them. So we have to have these separate meetings where we discuss some of these things, and I can raise my thoughts as to what I think is relevant. So thank you for joining me. As usual, follow through on let's continue to talk about the science, looking at difficult questions. If you find that challenging, this is the wrong place for you. But we will continue to, as best as possible, challenge the science. Have a great evening.